Are you in a remote location, like a land far, far away, away from all the fish stores, away from a lot of people, and you're trying to sell fish? Well, I understand. So let me show you some methods of branching out and reaching those potential customers. And throughout this video, I'm gonna go over three easy ways to expand your reach when everything seems so far away. Furthermore, if that's not really your problem, I'm sure you'll get some value out of this video. So stay tuned. Hello, YouTube. Patrick with Homebred Aquatics. So today, if you didn't hear, we're kind of going over the difficulties of being in a remote location and trying to sell fish. Um, a lot of people have had that. Um, a lot of people that watch me, I, I get it. It's difficult. But like I said in the intro, I want to go over some different ways. Maybe they don't all work for you, but maybe one of these is what you're missing. It's the way you're going to find that business when you thought there wasn't any business. All right, number one, travel. I get it. Traveling doesn't seem ideal. But what I mean, let's say the closest city to you is hours away, two, three, four hours. Now, that doesn't mean you can't be one of their trusted providers. Let's say it is four hours away, but you've always wanted to visit that city or you maybe there's a reason you need to go up there every once in a while. Crap, maybe you just want to make a weekend vacation out of it. My point here is plan for that. Now, I want you to make an excuse to go out of your way to conduct business. Uh, plan with the family or friends to have something fun to do, to shop around the area. Um, but the point here is travel far, sometimes four hours away, like I said. Um, get that connection with a fish store that's far away. Uh, make them be your sole provider. Now, maybe not your sole provider, but you are a huge part of their inventory when it comes to fish or plants or whatever it is. Now, there are some caveats to this. One, call ahead and make sure the owner will be there that day. If you're going to make a day trip out of it, you want to talk to that owner. You want to explain to him what you do, what you sell. You want to show him pictures. Um, but go in there, explain your intentions. Uh, but don't, don't keep them on the phone. Don't, I wouldn't do much of a phone call or anything. You could ahead of the time call them and kind of explain what your goal is and going up there um, with the intentions to sell and then see if that's something they're interested in. When you get in the store, explain your expertise, have pictures and videos ready of what you have to op offer. Talk about the quantity. Um, and if they seem interested, if they seem interested, talk price. But always remember, be reasonable. Just because you have to travel doesn't mean they need to take the burden of your expense. Remember, you're the one in the remote location. Your rent's a little bit cheaper, space is cheaper, Water might be cheaper, electrical might be cheaper because you're in that remote location. I'm not making excuses for you, but my point is you're trying to sell something. So understand it's not on them that you have to travel there. I do want to caveat to a very short story. Even though I'm, a, I'm in a very populated town, uh, I know a friend of mine that sold Betas. And she would travel all the way up to D.C., which is four hours away to just sell her betas because that's where her market was. And it was a good couple thousand dollars or at least a thousand dollars every couple weeks going up there. Now, some other things I want to pinpoint on that topic. Once you've made a valuable connection, sell in mass, have large quantities. I'm talking 500 plus in sales you can make over the trip. You don't want to go up there making a couple hundred dollars because you're going to spend a large majority of that in gas and probably in food. And if you bring the family, all that junk, 
I mean, maybe you can make it a vacation thing that you guys do every month with the money you get out from fish. But make sure you're prepared or make sure they're prepared to receive what you are bringing. The last thing you want to do is arrive to only be told no one was there to pay you or sorry, we can't take all of this right now. So just be prepared. Now, an honorable mention to this is join the local groups in that area. Again, let me use Washington, D.C. as an example. Let's say I want to go up to Washington, D.C. I've made connections with the owner. The owner knows I'm coming. I'm bringing him a bunch of fish. Join the groups. Let people know you're coming up to D.C. Maybe some people reach out to you, go, hey, I'm interested in that fish or these plants or those things. Get some extra sales out of it, right? Maybe you can't sell everything to the fish store, or maybe that just means you can sell a little bit of a higher price to those other people in that area. So just keep those things in mind. Just because you're in a remote location doesn't mean you can travel, can't travel to a larger city to make a lot of money. All right, number two, online sales. Now, I'm not a huge advocate of online sales because there is risks involved, and I'm going to go over that. But if you haven't purchased from Aquabin, Band App, or eBay, they're all wonderful selling options. Not only that, but buying options, where I buy a lot of my fish from people that breed at home just like me. Now, let me explain and show you each of these in detail. So first, I'm going to open up Aquabid right here. Um, Aquabid is the eBay of exclusive fish sales. Um, Aquabid shows every single category broken down by fish. Um, some are a little broader than others, but the point here is I want you to like, let's look at this. Let's open up a tab right here. Let's go into Epistogrammas and let's just select one of these fish. So what we'll see is kind of an explanation of the fish or what their forms of payment are. Is it a buy now option? Is it an auction option? And you can set all this up. Honestly, when I sell on Aquabid, I just copy someone else's stuff, maybe make a few little tweaks here and there, but it really is very similar to eBay overall. Let's talk about eBay. eBay is also a great option. Um, most of us know eBay, but I'll go through it. So let me open up eBay for you. And for instance, I bought quite a few guppies. So let's search up guppies. All right, and we see the guppies here. Again, I follow that same strategy. Kind of copy and paste what they do. You can add your own templates, your own business logos, those kinds of things. Um, is it going to be an auction? Is it going to be a buy now? Just remember, there's fees involved with eBay. Uh, they do take a large portion of your earnings. Now, on the contrary, eBay does offer pretty good shipping rates. Uh, you pay eBay or the person pays you and then you pay eBay back for the shipping at a discounted price, um, which makes it convenient, but it is a little bit lesser. So I normally lean towards Aquabid, but eBay is a great option if it's something kind of niche. Third being Band App. Now, what is Band App? So Band App is the Facebook groups of this app. All right, I'm going to open up Band App. So now you'll see in here that I have a bunch of different groups. Think of these like my Facebook groups. I can click on one of these groups, um, let's say the shrimp group, and I can go down and you'll see either buy it now options or sale options. Now for a lot of these groups, they're moderated by a particular person and they have a very particular format. That being said, I would just follow those exact formats, kind of like I explained in the other ways. And it's very similar to, like I said, Aquabid or eBay in that sense, where you follow those formats, you ship them out, bada bing, bada boom. 
So those are the three online things I would highly suggest. I do want to caveat to why I don't sell a lot online, and that is ill-intended people. What do I mean by ill-intended people? Well, what I mean by ill-intended people is um, the fact that you have to have very strict dead on arrival policies. I mean like really strict and it's sometimes so strict that I don't like to do it uh, because it, it's almost unrealistic in some ways to have to expect somebody to open up a box within two hours of it being delivered um, and then video record them opening up the box and then showing you the product that's dead. It's a little unrealistic, um, but people will will get you. They will show you a dead fish in their hands that they already had that they bought from the store and expect you to replace it. Now, I'm not saying everybody does that, but that is an example of an ill-intentioned person. So protect yourself with online sales. Understand the risk. Understand that there's delays in UPS and USPS and FedEx or whoever you ship through. And you just take the brunt end of that, unfortunately. All right, number three. Facebook. <laughs> Don't underestimate your reach. However, Facebook is a tricky place to market. Uh, depending on your remoteness, it may involve some legwork. Very similar to number one. My suggestion is to join local groups or make one. Advertise what you do, what you breed, and your knowledge and your passion. You can directly discuss pricing privately, uh, whether it's in your private messages or in group chats. In the public groups, use wording like UFG, <laughs> up for grabs. Um, PM me for details. Uh, that way people will message you privately to ask for pricing. Be very clear with outlining that because the last thing you want is a bunch of people are going, What's the price? How much is it on your actual post? And then Facebook flags that. But people are bound to reach out. This may involve a little driving or same thing, shipping, but the distances are lesser and so is the risk. Uh, if you specialize in plants, you can directly talk price about plants on public groups or your Facebook or whatever it is. Um, for instance, I use a lot, this group, um, auctions or quick buy groups um, for plants, and anybody can get on there and post their stuff on that for plants with pricing and everything. Um, so my point again is don't underestimate Facebook. Understand you just have to finagle it the right way. You have to use the right wording. Um, and sometimes you might have to travel a bit or it's shipping a couple hours, which isn't as risky. You can do low cost shipping that way, but there is avenues to selling your fish remotely. All right. So if you haven't watched my five mistakes when selling fish, please, please go watch it. Um, take it in. Don't let being remote hinder your ability to pursue your passion. I, I know, I, I can understand, I've lived in a really small town where it would be really difficult to sell something like that. Just understand it might take a little bit more work from your side of things. All right, I hope this really helps some of you guys that are living out in the boonies um, and just have plenty full of fish. If you found this helpful, please leave a like below. Um, Give me a subscribe if you don't mind, and I'm going to have more and more content like this coming up. All right. Thank you. Bye.